Welcome to TA Digest. Can you tell us about yourself and your role? Well, my name is Mary Winterston. I am the accreditation chair for the International Dyslexia Association. I've been an um, educator for over 30 years. I retired um, at the state level where I was the director of K-5 literacy for the state of Arizona. What is dysgraphia? Dysgraphia is not well known. It's, um, it, it shows itself with kids who have difficulty with handwriting, who have difficulty with planning to form letters and to be able to write. How common is dysgraphia and how might a pupil with it present in the classroom? There's a range because there's a variety of um, uh, the, the skills and the abilities or, or disabilities for students that have dysgraphia. So it can be anywhere from 10% to up to 30% of the population. A lot of times with students that have difficulties with handwriting, then we start thinking, should they see or get screened by an occupational therapist? That's usually who we head out to first. Um, these are kids that might have motor planning, uh, fine motor skill problem. Does dysgraphia affect pupils' academic performance? A lot of times students that have dysgraphia may also have attention deficit disorder. They might also may have dys- um, dyslexia. So also planning of what they're going to write. But dysgraphia is the formation, definitely. Um, so a lot of times it's having kids um, thinking about uh, the the, the whole process of writing and what it takes to do that to uh, forming the letters to actually having it written on the, the paper. Yeah, and, and just to think about copying off a board, you know, there's lots of processing steps. So they have to look at the board, they have to see that letter, they have to know the formation of the letter, then they have to remind, remember it in their short-term memory, then they have to put it on the paper. So there's lots of steps that uh, it can be affected. Again, it's not just dysgraphia, it's a potential deficit, if it's dyslexia, the formation of the understanding that this letter means the sound, and then do I even know what this word is? Can I hold it in memory? You know, there's so many pieces to just the writing piece. Does dysgraphia affect other aspects of a pupil's life? Yeah, so a lot of times, um, even teachers, we look at handwriting, and unfortunately, it's shown that um, based on the handwriting, sometimes that um, affects the grade. So they have poor grades because they have a hard time writing. Um, so yeah, it, it affects their self-esteem, uh, how they uh, look at themselves. Um, uh, however, with the uh, technology now, and uh, access to a lot uh, of technology to express ourselves in a written form, that has helped a lot for our students with uh, dysgraphia. So how can teaching assistants best support pupils with dysgraphia in the classroom? Well, first of all, get them ready for writing. So doing some kind of exercises with their hands um, and thinking through the planning of it. So as I said, uh, there's um, uh, papers that you can get that has the raised lines, larger lines so that they're forming the letter, reminding them, say, if they're saying the A or they're trying to spell the A, up and around, stop, come around, touch down, you know, giving the, the, the reminders of the signals on how to form letters. Um, lots of researchers uh, have uh, seen that cursive writing is, is easier than print. Uh, the uh, so do we teach them cursive writing, which is a little bit easier? The the pencil or the pen never leaves the paper, and it's always in a movement versus a script. It's raising it, stopping, raising it. I think uh, the, the reach out to the occupational therapist. Uh, get get some suggestions from them. They're they're the ones that really understand. They could be observing the student and give them feedback on what would probably work. Having a slant board uh, for their writing giving them time to shake out their hand um, uh, because they get tired is so strenuous for them because they are trying to really think through how to write. And so you have to be patient and give them time. Even as a teacher or paraprofessional that's working with a student, um, it's to help them with this processing. Can they already have the notes partially done and they just have to fill in part of it? Or uh, someone does the note taking for them. Uh, it's auditory, um, so recording um, of the lecture or what they're supposed to write and someone else writes for them, uh, or the use of assistive technology is really helping the kids now. What are the number one things is, you know, can they um, do large circles in the air? Can they cross the meridian line? Um, can you do fine tasks with um, 
stretching of the, the hands and making sure that they have that motor um, of the fingers, uh, working with play, um, being able to grip it, um, taking a pencil as easy as that, and just doing little exercises with this and having them go through that. Um, that's all for the uh, motor of the hands. What is one key thing teaching assistants can implement tomorrow in the classroom that will make the most difference? For primary K-1 student is doing large motor, having them sky write and form the letter before you ask them to write it down. So for the primary kids, it's really um, practicing and sky writing first before you have them write in the paper. For older kids, it's uh, just reminding them when they get stuck, just tell them either a cue to help them to form the letter or uh, start teaching them the use of assistive technology, uh, the keyboarding, helping them think about that.